I tell people all the time, you go to work for money. You've given up your body. You change your behavior because you are shaped in the image of whoever it is that hires you. This is what I want you to do. Now, if you want to get paid, then you're going to do it this way. You do that for money. So when all of a sudden now you want to get immortality, you want to be a part of God's family, but you're going to do the things that you want to do, that don't work. And then when you start to do the things that God wants you to do, you get a little opposition, all of a sudden you're faint. But we're going to start this in Luke, the 14th chapter, because Jesus warned you about this, sisters and brothers. Because, especially nowadays, because we are really, really living in the end days, and I'm not talking about, I'm not making an emotional statement. I'm making a statement that's founded on prophecy. Because it is high time for us to stop guessing what's going on and know what's happening. So here in Luke, the 14th chapter, we're going to start at verse 25. The Lord is letting you know, you know, if you're going to follow me, you better be prepared. Because people are not prepared because for what's going to come when you start to do this thing right. Let's start it at verse 25. Okay, go ahead. And there went a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, uh -huh. If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now that's, uh, that's, that sounds real extreme, don't it? Because the word hate is a strong emotion. But the Lord is not talk, telling you to walk around, I hate you, I hate you. What he is telling you is that your love has to be for me, your love for me has to be so strong compared to anybody else. The emotion is hatred. Because whoever you love the most, sisters and brothers, that's who you're going to obey. And the Lord started this right at your own household because that's where you're going to get your first ballet in your own household. Your mother, your daughter your father, your friend, your sisters, your brothers. And also, he said, and you have to hate your own life. In other words, sisters and brothers, if you, whatever you have to give up to serve God, then the Lord said, you have to deal with it. Go ahead and read. And whosoever doth not bear his cross uh -huh. and come after me Go ahead. cannot be my disciple. And that's what it means, bearing the cross. It bearing the cross means it's going to get hard sometimes to try and serve the Lord. Sometimes you're going to have to force to do things that you don't want to do. Sometimes you're forced to deal with people you don't want to deal with. Sometimes you're forced to live in an environment that you don't particularly care for. But if this is what it takes to stay inside of God's law, then we have to deal mm -hmm. with it. Because you are trying to become God. That's a great big statement. So you have to bear your cross. Go ahead. For which of you? Intended to build a tower, sit it not down first, uh -huh. and count it the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Go ahead. Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, uh -huh. and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. And he said, you know, just like you're getting ready to build something, first thing you have to figure out, do you have the funds or the resources to finish this? If you don't, then you're going to get halfway or partially through your building, then you're going to run out of money, your project going to fall to the ground, and everybody's going to mock you. Mm -hmm. Same thing if you're going to start dealing with this word of God and start living right. And then, as soon as you get to the point where you faint, everybody's going to remind you of it. Yep. Oh, you're so holy. Oh, why, how, why aren't you so holy like mm -hmm. you was yesterday? Uh -huh. Look at old, old righteous James. Then all of a sudden, You're being mocked by the people that care for you because you could not finish it. Read that next verse. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Uh-huh. Or what king going to make no, that's war? enough. Mm -hmm. They said, this man began to build and he couldn't finish. Same thing with serving the Lord, sister and brother. Because if you are not prepared to serve him right, somebody that's going to knock you off the dime. And what's going to happen, somebody's going to come along and they are go they're going to wash your faith with it. Because you're not dealing, when you deal with the word of God, you're not dealing with the status quo. You are going against the status quo. And we're going to show you this. Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 
Oh, that's the whole thing. It is hard sometimes for you to give up something that you have been taught all your life. It's hard for you sometimes to go against the people that you have loved the most in your life and to find out that you have been misinformed. That's a hard thing, sister and brother. But if you're going to serve God, you got to do it this way, or you may as well go on home and do something else on this day. Because the Lord is not a compromiser. Man got to learn that. He wants you to do it exactly the way he wants you to do it. If you don't, you don't have no dealings with you. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, we're going to start reading at verse 1, 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, before we go any further, this one statement have belied most of the teaching that's going to go on in the Roman Christian church, which we call Christianity. What do you mean, Brother Boer? He said, I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead mm -hmm. at his appearance and at his coming. But people are saying, well, you have people in heaven. If they're in heaven, then they've been judged mm -hmm. already. If they're in hell, they've been judged already. But still, Jesus is not here, is he? Mm -hmm. So now, what it's being said here is that ain't nobody going to get judged until the Lord comes. And if nobody's going to get judged till the Lord comes, then where are all the people that have mm -hmm. died, sister and brother? In the grave. It's all that simple. Go ahead. Preach the word. Uh -huh. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now he said preach the word, didn't he? Mm -hmm. People tell you, well, I don't argue the Bible. What does reprove mean? Mm. What does rebuke mean? That's right. You're going to be quiet while somebody live a lie or while somebody tell a lie and you're not going to do nothing about it and you can't serve this God of mm -hmm. Israel, sister and brother. And he said, with long suffering, that means you got to be patient mm. and with doctrine. That's why people call sometimes in Chicago and they want to talk to me. Well, I have some questions to ask. That's the first thing. Do you have your Bible? No, well, call me back when you get your Bible. <laughs> because we deal with doctrine. What doctrine? What's written in the book? My opinion and your opinion mean nothing. It is what's written in the book. So the Lord said, you got to preach it in season and out of season. What you mean in season? This Christmas coming up. You have to show people this pagan. You don't do that. Mm. And anything else that pagan, you're supposed to show them. Go ahead and read. For the time will come uh -huh. when they will not endure sound doctrine. Go ahead. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. No, he said after their own lust. So they ain't going to do a sound doctrine. So what, what do you mean heap to them teachers having itching ears? You, if you have to pay somebody, you're going to pay somebody to tell you what you want to hear. You want to pay somebody to give you a cot blanche card to break God's commandments. But Brother Boy, we don't want it. Yeah, you people is, you're paying people to tell you, well, you're not under the law no more. You're under the grace. They don't have enough understanding to know what the law it is that mm. you ain't under no more. Then they turn around and call you a sinner. Sisters and brothers, Paul tell you in the seventh chapter of Romans that the law is the, the that that the law is the strength of sin. What does it mean? Because if there is no law, there is no sin. Because the biblical definition of sin is the transgression of the law. Now, how can the law be no more? And we still have sin. That sounds pretty good to me. I can walk under grace. Mm -hmm. and don't have to keep the commandments no more. That means I can do anything I want. If that's the case, then we have to remove sin. But these things, people don't think about because people want to do what people want to do. So what you're going to do, you're going to hire you somebody with itching ears going to scratch your ear. They're going to give you what you want. Give me a cunt block shot. Go in and sleep around and mess with everybody, do whatever I do, lie mm. on everybody, distort everybody, whatever it is. Well, you under grace. But the book don't agree with that. Go ahead. Verse 5. Go ahead. Verse 4. Verse 4, go ahead. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth uh -huh. and shall be turned into fables. Fables is something you done heard, but it can't be proved. Jesus born on the 25th day of December. 
Herod killed all the children from two years and back trying to catch Jesus. Mm -hmm. If he killed the children from two years and back, that means he didn't know when Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. Now, how is it that we, some 2,000 years later, know exactly he was born mm -hmm. on the 25th mm -hmm. day of September? Mm -hmm. It's a fable, sisters and brothers. We have served Sunday and Easter because Christ rose on Easter Sunday. That's a fable. How do I know it's a fable? Because you've been told he died on Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Rose Easter Sunday morning. Jesus tell you in Matthew, the 12th chapter, when they ask him for a sign, he said, evil and adulterous generation, I will give you but one sign. Just if Jonah was in the bed of the whale for three days and three nights, so would the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Can you get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday morning? I don't care if you use Chinese math, mm -hmm. sister and brother. In other words, it is a fable. So now, if Jesus did not rise on Sunday, and he didn't, then why are you having service on Sunday? Then if he didn't rise on Easter Sunday, then why are you observing Easter? You should do something real smart. Go in your encyclopedia and look on the Sunday and look on the Easter. You will be surprised at what you find mm -hmm. out. You have been worshiping a fable. But people get upset with you when you tell them. Go ahead. But watch thou in all things, uh -huh. endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, uh -huh. make full proof of thy ministry. But watch all things, endure affliction. If you're serving a God, you got something coming. If you don't have it yet, be prepared. It is on its way because you have to make full proof of your ministry. How do you do that? By reading this book. Mm -hmm. If you're serving a God, you don't leave room for people to debate. That's why, because when you leave room for people to debate, first thing they're going to do is make the commandments of God have no effect on them. And Jesus said this. Let's go into Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, chapter 15. That's why the Lord called me to have a saying in Israel of God. If you can't, can't, can't read it, don't believe it. It's all that simple. Because you have too many doctrines out here that have no back. If you can't read it, don't believe it, sister. Because this is a, this is a big thing here. You know, this is what, what people have to understand. You're going to do what God tells you to do, or you're going to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Because God did not create man to die. Death was not a part of the original creation. Death was added because of man's sin. That's why the Lord said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of the living, not the God mm -hmm. of the dead, because everybody's going to live forever that's ever been born. What you got to do is decide what part of the kingdom you're going to live in. See, Satan ain't got no demand. The lake of fire is going to be in God's kingdom, but it's going to be in the ugly position of his kingdom. That's why I had to tell some brothers some years, some some uh, uh, some months back, they called themselves the, you know, the uh, 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 Pan-African, mm -hmm. worshiping death, worshiping death. I said, why are you worshiping death? Death is merely a temporary pause in life. Because everybody that's ever been born is going to live forever. And I tell people all the time, especially at funerals, the worst thing that's ever happened to you if you don't keep God's commandment is to have been born. We have to understand this, sisters and brothers, because this is high stakes here that we're dealing with. We're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Go ahead. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? See, he's talk they talking tradition. Why do you transgress the tradition of the elders? Which your, uh, 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 he said, well, why do you transgress the commandments of God with your tradition? That's right. And that's what people are doing all the time. Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, 
honor thy father and thy mother. Uh -huh. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. There was no condition, there was no condition that. When you go into Genesis, the 20th chapter, and read it, when he tell you that, that's the only thing he tell you, do that, that your days might be long on this earth. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, honor your father and your mother if they've been good to you and they raised you right and they fed you well. He had no addendum on it. You dishonor, your mother and your father don't deserve honor. That ain't got nothing to do with you. You honor them because the law will deal with them. Mm -hmm. But the day that you dishonor them, you just made you a debt. But he going to deal with you all. Mm -hmm. Because look what he said that Israel had, had going on that time. Go ahead and read. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Uh -huh. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. So in other words, they look, if I give you stuff and I buy you stuff, or either if I take care of you or pay your rent or let you live with me, then I don't have to honor you. In other words, your parent have taken the role of the child now. Mm. That's why I said, it's whatever you get, get from me and you don't have to pay for it, if it's, and it's free, I don't have to honor you. Mm. Lord said, no, no. With that, you have, with your tradition, you have made my commandments to have no effect. Go ahead and read. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect uh -huh. by your tradition. Go ahead. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, uh -huh. and honoreth me with their lips, Go ahead. but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Look what they call them, hypocrites, listen, brother. They honor me with their mouth. They draw near to me, all of the Lord, oh, Christ is my Savior, my God and light. Oh, I am so endowed with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I love you. Then you won't keep his dietary law. You won't even keep his Sabbath day. That's a part of God's commandment. said, remember the seventh day, the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And he gave you a number so you will never lose track on the Sabbath day. You get a bunch of foolish brothers come out and tell me, well, you know, the week started with the new moon, then you couldn't remember the Sabbath mm -hmm. day. I tell the people all the time when I hear them say that, what was the Sabbath, what was the moon created on? A day or was a day created on a moon? Mm -hmm. The Sabbath day was around all the time. So tomorrow, everybody's going to say, that's the Christian Sabbath day. That ain't got nothing to do with you. So with their tradition, they have made the commandments of God to have no effect. Everybody washing their cars on this day. They're doing all the work on this day. They're going and doing it. And then last night, Friday night, the eve of the Sabbath, everybody go out and shake it up, shake it down, get drunk and everything else on the Sabbath day. Hmm. With your tradition, you made the commandments of God to have no effect. That's why I said, well, did I say, call them hypocrites? Saying, you draw near with, you, with my mouth, with your mouth. And you honor me with your lips. And teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Let's go in the eyes there and read what Jesus just, just read, just quoted. Let's go in the eyes there to 29th chapter. See what happens, sisters and brothers. Don't nobody want to hear this truth. Nobody wants to live this truth. Everybody wants to do what everybody wants to do. If it was that easy, sisters and brothers, then uh, this thing would be a cakewalk. It is not easy. In order to get something, you have to give up something. Mm -hmm. In order to become God, you have to show maximum self-control. If you can't discipline yourself now, you think God's going to give you all power? Do mm -hmm. you? Can you comprehend all power? That's an absolute. Because when Jesus come out the ground, when he raised, he, he went before his apostles. He said, all power is given into my hand in heaven and earth. He is the forerunner. He is your big brother. When you become like him, you will have all power. And he made it clear in the second, in, in the, uh, 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 in, in Philippians, the second chapter, he said when he was in his former state, when he's in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's a big statement, ain't mm -hmm. it? That's what you're going to be if you can wrap your mind around it. 
We're not talking foul stuff. We're talking high stakes here, sister. So he said, Isaiah, quote it. He quoted Isaiah, said he's a hypocrite that draw near mm. with me with their mouth. We're going to start at verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep. These are the people that don't want to hear. You're in a deep sleep. All you deal with is pagan. Mm. Go ahead and read. And hath closed your eyes. Uh -huh. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. If you didn't close everybody's eyes, that means you don't see, or nobody see anything, mm. don't. Go ahead and read. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, uh -huh. which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. Uh -huh. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So the book is closed and sealed. Can you read a book that's no. closed with seals on no. it? Uh-uh. But then again, he said, deliver it to somebody else. Go ahead and read. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, uh -huh. Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I have not learned. So if you're gonna, now you're going to send it, give it to a guy that can't read. And say, read these, I pray that I can't because I'm not learned. So if a book's sealed, you can't read it. And if you can't read, it's just like that old statement I heard him sometimes. You know, you know, uh, Pastor John <laughs> can't read a lick, but he sure can preach. What is he preaching? People don't pay no attention to the Lord. The Lord educate before he sent on a mission. Mm -hmm. He know Moses had to take care of the Israel. He needed no government. So he raised him up on the inside of one of the most uh, 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 advanced governments at that time, which is Egypt. Then he know Joshua was going to take Joshua was going to take over. So Joshua hung around Moses. And before he dispatched his apostles, he let them hang around him for three and a half years. And then when Paul was called to preach, he went out in Arabia and he taught him for three years. Because the Lord do not send any uninformed servants out. If you don't know nothing, you can't represent the God of this body. You have to have some knowledge. And we have to get away from this thing. But you, well, you know, the Holy Ghost too. And the Holy Ghost is, is, is written in these pages here. So look, if you can't preach because the book is sealed, and if you can't preach or teach because you can't read, then what's left? Let's see what's left. Go ahead and read. Well, for the Lord said, uh -huh. For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, uh -huh. and with their lips do honor me, Go ahead. but have removed their heart far from me, uh -huh. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So if you can't read the book, because the seal, if you can't read it because you can't read, then if you're teaching, what are you teaching? The precepts of men. That's why I said fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. The man don't teach fear. How many times in your church you heard somebody threaten you with the lake of fire no. with worms eating on you all for eternity? They tell you that God loves everybody. He loves everybody. Every time they tell me that, I say, well, then why did God drown a whole world except for eight people? Wait, that's the old, that's the old heart of God, that old, no, that's Jesus. You ain't never dealt with the Father at no time in any generation. He loved everybody, but he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Now you have homosexuals want to have, be all in church and they want to run this. The Lord killed Sodom and Gomorrah and a whole lot of little cities for that, sisters and brothers. The Lord destroyed, had the tribe of Benjamin destroyed down to 500 men. That's right. Because they were protecting homosexuals. Mm -hmm. He even tell you in Romans, the first chapter, that people that hold the truth in, of God and unrighteousness, that is preachers that know the truth and preaching wrong, he's going to turn them over to homosexuals mm -hmm. that they might be damned. Why is it don't nobody read, know this? Because you've been teaching fable. So now, if you have not read the book, what do you do? The fear toward the Lord is taught by the precepts of men. And men don't teach fear. Because if you start to fear the Lord, then you will 